Hello everyone. Welcome to a uh, another wonderful, exciting, featureful feature presentation thing. So, uh, a few years ago, those of you who've been watching my channel for a while uh, might remember that a few years ago I did a series of videos on a CD called Game Fest, which was a CD uh, very often sold in Radio, Radio Shack stores, actually, uh, in Canada in the uh, mid-1990s. That's where I got it back when I was still living there in that place at that time. And, um, and yeah, I played through several different games on that CD, uh, which I think some people liked and some people didn't. Well, for those people who didn't like it, uh, I am very sorry. But for those people who did like it, I'm pleased to uh, say that there was a Game Fest 2 CD, or Game Fest CD 2. I don't know which one is correct, but it's one of those, I think. And... Um, yeah, and I thought, well, let's let's go through some of the games on it and see what's there. I want to mention just in passing, for those of you who actually like this kind of thing, um, many of you probably know who Chris Asik is. Uh, he's also known by his online handle, Gemini. Uh, he is a fellow Canadian old gamer who um, is kind of known for his uh, web series, like his web video series, Ancient DOS Games. And he, uh, he's been doing it for several years now, and it's, it's really good. Like, he really reviews in, in a surprising amount of depth uh, a lot of uh, old DOS games, and I think it's up to episode 200 and something by now, so he's, he's reviewed lots of games. But he's relatively recently started another series called Shovelware Diggers, which is exactly what I did on my Game Fest CD. In fact, I almost wonder if he stole the idea from me. I, I kind of almost wonder if maybe he saw some of my videos and got the idea from them. I, I don't know. I mean, he's he's welcome to steal my idea. It's not it's not my idea. It's not like it's copyrighted or something. But anyway, um, so yeah. So if you like that kind of thing, check it out. Search on YouTube for Shovelware Diggers, and you will see him playing... Uh, various games off another shovel, Shovelware CD. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. So um, I have things set up here in DOSBox so that drive D contains the CD, I think. Yeah, there we go. So there's, yeah, so there are two directories there. One contains the, the games themselves, and then the, the other is for uh, the, the program and things. We can just say go. I mean, there's a batch file here, go.batch. Let's just run that. Let's just run that. Copycat, yeah. Game Fest, STG Computer Limited. Yeah, this is a bit misleading because it says Game Fest, but this is actually Game Fest 2. This, this was actually the second Game Fest CD, even though the first one used a completely different interface. Those of you who saw the first one remember that um, there was a completely different user interface for the uh, catalog program on the first CD. So in the lower left, we have our menu, such as it is, and it has just three choices in it. So one, you can format a floppy disk, which I don't know why you would want to run this program to format a floppy disk. You can do that from DOS. Just type format A colon or B colon, whichever drive your floppy drive has. And then, yeah, if you want to tag programs, but I mean, there's no really reason you just go to select program categories. And then, yeah, and so there's help, which we don't need. We don't need help. We're well-adjusted people. Display computer specific. Hmm. I wonder what you know. I never tried this. I wonder what shows up if you say display computer specification in DOSBox. Hmm. DOS version five. Is there actually a way to to set what version of DOS is reported by DOSBox? That's interesting. And it's it's detecting a 486 CPU at 12 megahertz. That's interesting. You know, I never actually. I never actually dickered around with this. I wonder if, uh, you know, I'm curious now. Wow, is, is it actually emulating three parallel ports and two serial ports? Wow, that's pretty crazy. You know, I'm actually just curious. Just before I get started with the games, it says CPU speed's 12.2 megahertz. What if I actually change the cycle speed in DOSBox? Let me go ahead and slow down the cycle speed in DOSBox now and then run run that again. Is it actually going to report... Does it actually detect a different um, uh, CPU speed based on the... Oh, now it actually detected a faster speed. That's funny. I, I slowed down DOSBox. I actually made DOSBox slower. I, like, I brought down the cycles quite a bit. And for some reason now it's detecting 19 megahertz instead of, what was it before? I think 12 something. 
Uh, that's interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. There's something with the algorithm that makes it, I guess, go inversely to how inverse how fast it's actually going. Okay, that's interesting. Um, oh, why did I quit? I didn't. I don't suppose I actually had to quit. You don't have to quit the program to change the cycles in DOSBox. You can just do it from the keyboard. Control F12 uh, or Control F11 F12. Okay. Anyway, all right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game. So the the games are in four different categories. Um, I don't think the categories are very good because you have game EGA and VGA, and then suddenly you have board and card games and simulators and sports. Now, the the lower the lower two options here are actually categories of games. They're actually kind of genres of games. But an EGA game is not a genre. It's just a, a technology. I mean, it's just the video mode. So I guess they kind of... I think the idea here is that these two up here are supposed to contain the good games. These are the fun games, you know. So if you want if you want a, a really good game in, like, VGA, for example. Actually, the, the really big draw here, I think, the, like, the it, there's no real secret to it. The game that gets top billing here, if you go into game VGA, is Doom. Yeah, I remember the uh, the cover art for this CD actually features a picture of Doom Guy. I think it, it features elements from three different uh, games... One of which is not even on the CD, funnily enough. So yeah, so there are three three things on the cover up for the CD. One is Doom Guy from Doom. The second is the spaceship from Raptor right here. And then the third one is that guy from um, Hocus Pocus, which was, you know, a, a platformer from Apogee. Um, but they that game is not on the CD, so I don't know why they put that picture on the CD cover. I guess they just thought it looked cool. I mean, it doesn't say Hocus Pocus, so if you don't know that it's from Hocus Pocus, you, you wouldn't know what it's from. You might think it's from a game on the CD, but it's not. So anyway, so these are the VGA games, and these are like, again, these are like the, the top billing games, the games that, that are supposed to be really fun to play. Um, do, I, do I want to start here, or... I'm tempted to start here, but let's let's try to do this a little bit in order. I'll, I'll come back to that later if I... Uh, or maybe I'll come back to that later if I end up d d making a long series out of this. But let's check under game EGA. Oh, Bastor. Oh, excellent fishing game. I like these descriptions that they put in here, too. Are these from the file ID dis files, I wonder? EGA Othello. Oh, it's a game about uh, Shakespearean play. That's good. I like that. Slot machine. Okay, ever played the slots? Here's your chance. Darn it. Very entertaining solitaire card game. Yeah. I have to say... Um, a lot of the games here, I, I don't quite get the same sense of joyful discovery from this CD that I got from the first Game Fest CD. The first Game Fest CD was really full of the joy of just finding these uh, adorable little DOS games on the, in these old shareware collections, like real old shareware games from the 1980s and very early 1990s. Um, here... The games tend to be a bit more mixed. Uh, a lot of the games are newer, I mean, like like Doom and things like that, and then the games that are older are often not just not very good. I mean, some of them are really good, but some of them are just not. So, um, I mean, like here, right off the top, let's start let's start with Bast Four because this this is actually a great game. This is this is really, in my opinion, a wonderful game. So when you select a game here, again, you have the option to format a floppy disk. I don't, I, I don't know why why would you want to. I guess if you need to copy the game to a disc, like if, I think the reason why, you saw how some of the games are divided into like one of two and two of two. I think this is from the floppies. Like they actually took floppy images and turned them into various entries here. So Raptor comes on two floppies, Doom came on two floppies, I guess. I assume that's the reason why. So, so yeah, like you can copy this to a floppy if you want, but um, yeah, I, I think the most sensible thing to do is just say copy highlighted file to disc. And then we can just go ahead and make our own uh, directory name here. So I'll just call it Bastor. Why not? And it copies pretty quickly on a contemporary PC. So yeah, let's exit out of here. And then if you go to Drive C, we should see. Yeah, there we go. There is Bastor. And there are obviously a number of files here. Um, do we want to read some of these files? I mean, I don't really, I don't have a good file viewer. Actually, I don't have any file viewer here other than just type, I guess, type readme.doc. Okay, this is just, yeah, this is just, yeah. I, I mean, I guess it's a very typical readme file. Thanks, and good fishing, Dick Olson. Thanks, Dick Olson. All right, what do we have here in terms of exe files? Okay, there's just one exe, are there any comma files? 
I listen to do this. I, I search for exes, coms, and bats. So there's a bt dot b. Okay, there's a, there's a bt install, which I don't. I don't think. Do we need to install? I don't think so. I don't. I think most of these games are already installed, and installer just copies them. But there's nothing to unpack or anything like that. What does bt dot bat do? It just runs bass tour. Okay. Well, let's run bass tour. Detected something. I didn't see what that said. Okay, here we go. It's Bass Tour by Dick Olson, version 4.7. If you enjoy Bass Tour, please register your copy, sending 15 bucks to the author in Littleton, Massachusetts. Um, I don't know if Mr. Olson is still at that uh, that address, but if, if he is, I almost feel like sending him money just because this is such a good game. So in the upper right, these areas are available to fish. There are six of them, so you can fish in Crystal Lake, Horseshoe Pond, Lake Lewis, Maze Lake, Mead Reservoir, or Pete's Pond. Hmm. I'll go ahead and choose Crystal Lake, why not? It sounds like a nice name. Of course, it's just a name, but... There are four play modes, Novice, Intermediate, Pro, and Practice. Um, I wonder what, what's, the what's the difference between Practice and Not Practice mode? Practice mode! Uh, and I'll say Novice. I mean, uh, Practice sounds... I mean, it would be good to practice, because I haven't played this for probably something close to 20 years, but I'll go ahead and say I'm a novice and see what the... Enter your name. Uh, okay, I'll go ahead and put in a name. Would you like to use a mouse? Yeah, it's probably... I, I sometimes complain about games that use mice, but in this case... Um, I very often prefer using the keyboard to using the mouse because I was so used to it. When the the original Half Life came out, I, I think I, I, it's it stuns me now to to think of it. And I think a lot of people will just kind of shake their head when I say this. But when the original Half Life came out, I played through the whole thing with just the keyboard. I'm not even kidding because I was so used to playing first person shooters like Doom uh, and and so on with with the keyboard. So I literally controlled everything in Half Life with the keyboard. Um, it's it, it almost boggles my mind to think about it now that I actually did that and it, and it seemed normal to me like it didn't seem even, it didn't seem clunky to me people now looking at that would say why are you doing that but it, it seemed normal to me at the time so anyway but in this case I'll say yes let's use a mouse okay so here we go it looks like this and I think this is using is this using that EGA mode where the pixels are double high or something like that I think it might be there's I forget exactly what the resolution is, but you know there's that that weird EGA resolution where, um, actually no, I don't think it is. No, I thought it was, but I don't, yeah, looking more closely at it, I don't, well maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, I have no idea. Anyway, so this is the game, um, left button for commands, so yeah, this is, oh, you can even print, you can press P to print. Um, so so, I, I've played this game lots of times when I was younger, but I haven't played this for years, so I forget how the controls work. Um, where do you start? Well, I mean, you can see here what the controls are, but obviously I don't need to do all of these all at once. So where do I start? Let me just see. How do I cast? So if you press C, you go into cast mode cast mode. All right, so let's try it. If I just press C, there you go. So left button to cast and right button to exit cast mode. So if I just click here, oh, I need to select a rod. Okay. Um, so how do I select a fishing rod? Press R. Press R for rod to choose your mighty rod. All right. And you get all, you get all these fishing rods I and mean, you can get a pissed grip cast, a two hand cast, a pitching stick, a flipping stick. I don't know what the difference is. Obviously, I, obviously the the weight of the line. I mean, get I guess these ratings and pounds are how heavy the fishing line is. But other than that, I don't know what the difference is. What's I mean, what's the difference between a spin rod and a flipping stick and a pitching stick? I don't know. I'm not a fisher in real life. I don't I don't go fishing in real life, so I couldn't really say. But I don't know. Let's pick something that seems reasonable, like. I don't know, a two-hand cast. Yeah, two. let's be really manly and hold our rod with two hands because it's so big. Yeah. All right, and I think I probably... Let me try casting now, but I think I need to... Yes, I need to select a bait as well. Okay, Um. so bait is then... Is it B? Well, and where is... Ah, uh, yes, tackle box B. You've got a problem with your tackle. Wait, what's that? Oh, that was that was that was Rin and Katawa Shoujo who said you've got a problem with your tackle. That's that's right. I was trying to think where where did I hear that word and then I remembered. So um, 
Tackle box with six drawers, crank baits and stick baits, spinner baits and jigs, service baits, subsurface spoons, etc. Plastic worms, gitzits, etc. And miscellaneous baits. Oh, I like miscellaneous things. So here you can get a shoe strings tornado, dances craw, dances eel, or the rat. Um, I gotta be honest, I do not know what the difference between these things is. Can I go back? Oh, okay, if you just press escape, it exits, it exits out of that. Okay, I'll try again. Press B for the bait menu. Um, the names are pretty awesome, but let me try... Um, let's see, I mean, do I want a surface bait? I mean, some fish swim on the surface, and so you want a surface bait for them, or you can want a subsurface thing like a spoon. Let's, let's go for a spoon! Spoon man! Catch your fish with your hook on the line! Um, I mean, I, I don't know what any of these things are. I mean, you can get a silver buddy or a man's little George. I mean, again, the, the names are wonderful. The, the names of these fishing baits are just, uh, I'm just, I'm just astounded. This is something, a Vibric rooster or a rooster tail. Because, yeah, he come to, they come to, wait, what was it? They come to snuff the rooster. You know, he ain't going to die. Um, that's already two grunge references that I've made in the last 60 seconds. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to pick something completely random. Crocodile swim. Oh, and then you can even choose a color. I don't know. I mean, frog. Is frog a color? I mean, frogs have a color, but frogs are different colors. There's not only just one frog. I mean, we associate them with green, like Kermit, but frogs can be different colors. I don't know. I'll say I have a crocodile spoon frog, because why not? There are probably many good reasons why not, but I don't know what they are. Whoa! I landed the fish already. The fish weighs 0 0.84 pounds. Great success. Um, the fish is... Oh. I think something's a little bit wrong with the timing because um, I think that... Hold on, let me slow down DOS box a bit. Because that message was supposed to stay on the screen longer than that. I think it said something like the fish is smaller than the legal limit of 12 inches and so you have to throw it away. I think legally a fish has to be like at least in this game. I don't know what the laws are. And I assume I assume whatever laws apply here are American laws, and so the laws may vary from one country to another. But anyway, let's try again. You cannot cast that. Oh, I need to click a little closer. There we go. This is probably more like the speed that the game was meant to run at. Come on. Come on, man. I caught, I caught a fish with my very first cast, and now I'm not catching anything. Oh, there we go. Fish on! The fish was a fighter, but you got her. The fish weighs 1.65 pounds. Oh yeah, that's a big fish. Well, it's not really It's not really a very big fish, but it's big enough, I guess. I mean, it's bigger than adding fish to live well. Oh yes, uh, the live well is, um, we well, can probably guess, it's it's basically a container for live fish. So when you catch fish, you stick them in the, in the live well. And then I think if I remember right, let me check. Uh, yes, live well is L. Let me go ahead and press L. Turn on aerator. Yeah, I forget what the... I forget what the aerator does, but I seem to recall that you want to turn on the aerator because otherwise the fish will probably die in the live well. I think the idea is you're supposed to keep them alive in the live well until you take them home and then you can, then you can kill them so that they're nice and fresh. Because you don't want them to start. If you kill them now, they're going to start rotting in the in the boat. Because we're here for six hours. You can see the whole the total fishing time is six hours. So if you have dead fish in your boat for that long, they're going to start rotting and stinking. So you keep them alive while you're fishing, and you have a, a well with an aerator for that. Because you know fish need air to live. They have those gills that they use to. Anyway, so let's go ahead and um, turn on the aerator with F7. There you go. Now you see here, live well aerator is on. It was off before. I forget. I forget what happens, but I think like if you if you go for a while with without turning on the aerator, then the game says something like your fish died, and um, and now they're going to start getting rotten, or you have to throw them away because they're going to rot or something like that. So anyway, so we have a fish, and the aerator is on. I don't know why you would want to. I don't think there's any good reason to to keep the aerator off. I think they just have this in the game for realism because, you know, in real life, obviously, you would have to turn on the aerator. If you forget to turn it on, then, yeah, you've got a problem. So I think just for realism's sake, they put it in there. But I don't think there's any reason to turn it off, so just keep it on. Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe there is a reason to turn it off, but I don't know of one. So let's try some more. And you can only, you know, I just keep looking here because you can't cast behind you. 
You cannot cast in that direction. I really don't know why. I don't know what prevents you from casting in that direction, but just somehow, maybe it's maybe it's like a houseboat and there's a huge house on the back of the boat and you can't cast through it, so you can only cast forward. But yeah, you can only cast on the forward side of the boat. And obviously here, there's land, so I can't cast here because I'm not going to catch any fish on the ground. So that's why I'm casting in this area. How do I turn the boat around? If memory serves, it's control and then the left and right arrow keys. Oh, you need to start the outboard or the trolling motor, or use the paddle for you with the boat. See, this is one thing I love about the game. It, it has so many options. All these options, it's so cool. So I need to either start the outboard motor, lower the trolling motor, or use the paddle. So paddling is kind of a last resort. It's very slow. Paddling is good because it's silent, which is nice, but it's very slow. Um, the trolling motor, I think, is an electric motor, and then the outboard motor is, you know, it's a big gas-powered motor. So the, the outboard motor is the most powerful, and you use that when you want to go fast, but um, the problem with it is it's so loud that it'll drive the fish away. So the trolling motor is so-called because you can use it to troll for fish. The trolling motor is quiet. I think it's like a small little electric motor, so it's not very fast, but you can use it to kind of push the boat along a little bit, and it's very quiet, so it won't drive the fish away. So I need to do one of those three things. Um... Whoops, I need to, uh, hold on, let's see. Let's start the outboard motor and go somewhere. Outboard motor on off is O. So let's go ahead and press O. There we go, outboard motor is running. Now, again, if I press control right arrow, ah, I still remember it after all these years. Yeah, control right arrow will rotate you to the right. And then do I just press up arrow? Whoops, you've run aground. The accident cost you two minutes. I pressed up arrow because I thought it would move in the direction that the boat is facing. But no, it actually, it's not uh, relative directions, it's absolute directions, which means pressing up moves you up toward the top of the screen. So, so then, uh, you're stuck, you can't, uh, okay, how do I get unstuck? Oh, okay, I press, just press down, okay, I see, okay, that wasn't too bad. I was worried I was stuck and couldn't, couldn't move after that, but. Oh, I got a citation for running your lifeboat while not wearing a life vest. Okay, um, that is something good to remember. Uh, where is life vest? Life jacket is J. Okay, you are now wearing your life jacket. Okay, thank you. All right, can I? All right, let's go. Let's head out here. This looks like a nice place to fish because it's nice and open. So I'll press O. There you go, outboard motor's been stopped. Oh, I probably should have stopped it a little bit farther away because because um, it probably drove the fish out of this area. So, I remember I always liked to use the, um, yeah, graph LCD recorder. So if I press G, wait, is this what I'm thinking of? Not something else, isn't it? What, what does this do, actually? I don't even know what that does. Now, that's something else, I think. Uh, what did I... Do, 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 what did I... Um... What am I missing here? There's... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to turn on the, the little fish detector. There's a fish... Um... Contour map... M. I don't think that's what I want. No, this shows you contra map of Crystal Lake. I mean, okay, that's nice, but that, no, that's not what I wanted. Um, now there's there's a fish detector that uh, shows you where fish are. Like it'll actually show, like it's it, it actually detects and shows you where the fish are in the water. Um, how do I turn that on? I don't see an option for that. Um, Hmm. That's odd. Because this is not... Or is it? I don't think it is. Oops, no. Uh, this is clearly not what I'm... Oh, I tried to move and obviously I can't. Okay, let me turn on the trolling motor. How, how do I turn on the trolling motor? T. Okay, makes sense. There we go. Trolling motor is down, meaning it's in the water and I control with it. But yeah, this this is just showing. Oh wait, oh wait, hold on. Oh yeah, oh that those red things are the fish. Okay, so this does show you the fish. Okay, for some reason I thought that 
For some reason, I remember that's looking different, but okay. Those red things should be fish, so let's try it. I'll press C for cast mode again, and it's a little bit confusing. If I remember, the, the way it works is the right side of this is your boat's right side. So since the fish are a little bit off to the right and the boat is facing that way, the boat is facing uh, towards the lower left, that means I should cast around here because the fish are actually a little bit to the right of the boat. So like around here. Um, I don't think they would be this far away because they're only a little bit right of center. Um, hmm. Let me try moving. Can I not? Can I not move when I'm in cast mode? That's kind of annoying. So you have to go back and forth between cast mode when you want to move the boat. Okay. There's one fish there. I think that's a fish. I mean, those red things should be fish. I'm wasting a lot of time by running around with the trolling motor too, because the trolling motor is kind of slow. I mean, it's it's what you use when you want to catch fish, because otherwise the the, the loud outboard motor will drive the fish away. But come on. There we go, fish on. The fish got off after a brief struggle. Okay. This thing, actually, I actually never really learned to, to read this thing properly. What are the, how do you detect how far away the fish are? Is that, I guess, the, is that the left axis? So like one fish, like the, the fish are both around 10. Is that 10 feet? Does that mean they're 10 feet away? What's the scale here? How far is 10 feet in this game? I don't know. Um, I'm not having very much luck. Usually I have better luck than this trying to fish in this game. But... Where are all the fish? Okay, here we go. Here are some fish. Let's try casting here. Hmm. Fish sometimes hide out in these little, in these weeds for some reason. They don't, sometimes they don't like to be in the open water. They like to kind of sit in the, in those uh, weeds or in those kind of plants that grow by the, by the water. But that does not appear to be the case here. Here we go. Here are some fish. Let's try casting here. There we go. After a wild fight, you landed the fish. The fish weighs 1.56 pounds. Okay, DOSBox might be going a little bit too slow now. Let me speed up DOSBox a bit because I don't think it should be. <laughs> don't think it should be quite this slow. All right, adding fish to live well. Come on, let's go. Got him. The fish weighs 1.27 pounds. All right. Yeah, I mean that's that's fairly typical fish weight. I I have in the past I've sometimes caught fish which were like five pounds or something like that. I think the biggest fish that I got were something like six pounds or so. Um, Okay, it's only half a pound. That's going to be too small. I'll have to let him go, probably. Yeah, if it, yeah, smaller than the legal limit of 12 inches. Unfortunately, it must be released. Anyway, uh, let's try moving around a bit. Yeah, I'm not having much luck. Usually I have better luck than this in this game, but for some reason I'm not... Not... Uh... Here we go. Here are some fishies. Come on. I don't know why it hangs so long on this message. Like, it, it gets, it takes forever showing you how long, or it, take, it takes forever to show you how to get past the message of telling you how heavy the fish was, but then, anyway, all right. Well, it is a bowfin. Your lure has been mangled. I don't know what a bowfin is. Anyway, I've already, wow, I've already been going on for quite a while. I should probably quit out of this and uh, move on to a different game. But yeah, this is Bass Tour. Great, great game. I played this so much when I was younger, and I really love this game. It really just is. I mean, it, it has everything. It has high-resolution EGA graphics. So these are not just like, you know, cruddy old-school graphics. These are great-looking old-school graphics because they really have good, good d detail on them because the resolution is so high. And it has lots of options. I mean, this is what I like in a game. I like lots of options. I mean, you get like, I mean, you saw the different types of fishing rods you get, and then the or and then the different types of bait you get. Have like 500 trillion different types of bait with names like 
uh, jerky, jerky diggy and, and whatever. I, I don't know. I don't remember all the names, but I mean, wow, lots of options in this game, lots of possibilities. And it, it just, it looks so good. And I mean, the sound effects are perfect. It, it has really perfect, like DOS style sound effects. Everything about this game is just wonderful. So, so yeah, really, really great game. I'm very happy about that. So yeah, press Q to quit. And here we are back at the, um, at the command line. So that was kind of uh, that was kind of a highlight for me. Uh, the bad news is um, I think it's all downhill from here because I think I mean that's such a great game. I think it'll be hard pressed to find uh, a game as good as that one. So it's, game, game Fest Two CD is kind of like that guy who uh, who blew it too early and then uh, everybody gets bored because because uh, like the fun was over as soon as it started. So, but let's move on. Let's see. E.G. Othello, excellent version of a popular game. I mean, this is just you know it's uh, it's Othello. It's or reverse E, as Windows 2 users called it. EGA Othello. You know, let's just call it Othello. I mean, what are the chances there's another Othello game on this disc? Actually, probably pretty high. This disc does have a lot of uh, board and card games and things like that, which are kind of... I don't know if I'll skip over those. I mean, I, I don't dislike board and card games, but I don't know if they're really much fun to watch in a video like this. Or are they? I don't know. Let's see. Okay, this is very simple. There's, there's no text file of any kind attached to it. It's just literally just one exe file, and that's it. That's the whole thing. So, Othello by Earl Wad. Um, do you need instructions? Um, I'll say yes. I think I missed a screen there, but okay. In this, yeah, okay. So it's it's telling you how to. You only get a turn if you have a legal move. Yeah, I mean, at least it explains how the game works, which is good. Written in Turbo Pascal. Thanks for playing Othello. Okay. I'll say one player game. Black goes first. Do you want to be black? That's a, uh, a loaded question there, sir. Um, I mean, what what can I say now? If I say no, then you're, you're going to say that I'm racist. So, of course, I have to say yes. Uh, I definitely will need easy. I'm still probably going to lose on easy mode, but... Um, Let's give it a try. Let's play Othello. It's Black's turn, which I guess means it's my turn since I said I want to be Black. So, so yeah, you just, you, um, do you click the mouse or how do you, oh, press enter. Okay, press enter to play your move. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not very good at Othello. Actually, I'm terrible at it. I don't think, I mean, I played Othello in Windows 3.0 quite often when it was called Reversi, and I don't think I ever won it one single time in my entire life, which is probably because I never really learned how to play. I mean, I mean, I know the rules, like I, I know the basic idea of how to play, but I never really developed a strategy. I never figured out a good strategy for how to win. I know how to play, but not how to win, which is, um, I mean, basically you just try to get on the other side of the white or on top of, uh, on the other side of your opponent's color, and then you can capture all the, all the pieces between where you clicked and um, and the next instance of one of your pieces. But I mean, I mean, I can see that I'm not doing well. I can see that, that whatever strategy I'm employing is clearly not working, but I don't know what a better one would be. Like I said, I never really learned how to play this game well. I, I know, I just, I basically just know the rules, but I, d I don't know how to actually play it to win. So, um, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm very clearly gonna lose, probably quite badly at that. But uh, but hey, it's uh, it's Othello, which I never read Othello. Do they call the game Othello because because the Shakespearean play Othello is about a black guy? Is is that the re I mean, what what came first? Which which name Othello came first? The name of the Shakespearean play or the name of the game? I was always kind of under the impression that the, they called the game Othello after the Shakespearean play because it's about being black and white, right? But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, I don't know. No legal moves, okay? Um, so there we go. I actually didn't lose as badly as I thought I would. I mean, he had, he had 35, I had 29, so I lost 35 to 29. But that's actually, I expected to lose much worse than that, so actually that's not too bad. But again, this was playing on the easiest mode, so... All right, anyway, you want to play again? No, thank you. So, Othello. I mean, it's, yeah, like I said, this, like I said, this is a lot of these board and card games. I don't know if I really want to show off them off. I mean, it's it's not really very interesting to watch in a video, is it? And I mean, something like a slot machine. 
Plays like the real thing. You seldom win more than you lose. I mean, are these, is this kind of stuff really... I don't know. And then here's another a Solitaire card game. Klondike Solitaire. I mean, Solitaire is fine. I've got nothing against Solitaire. But all these all these casino games, things like that, I, I don't know. It just, I don't know if it's really much fun to watch. I, I feel like skipping over this stuff. Let's just play the slot machine real quick because I'm curious what the... Uh, what the uh, what the slot machine looks like? Maybe it's actually kind of interesting, but I don't know. Um, slot. Micro bucks two, an electronic marvel because you asked us for it. Actually, no, I did not. Uh, it pays ninety eight point nine percent. That sounds like a bad investment. That means you lose one point one percent of your money. But I guess actually, I guess that's I guess that's a fairly high. Uh, rate in casinos. I think very often casinos pay out less than that. So anyway, all right. Um, how do I play? Did that previous screen have instructions saying how to play? Did I just miss it because I was not paying attention? Uh, oh, okay. You press enter. You press enter and that does it. I wonder if you hold enter. Oh, no. I tried holding enter, but it doesn't. Holding enter does not make you hold the handle for longer. Does it even make a difference? If you, if you hold the handle on the slot machine longer, does it actually control how long it spins? I don't think it does. I don't think there's any kind of talent or skill or anything involved in slot machines. I think it really is literally you just pull the handle and it, and it rolls. There's literally no skill involved whatsoever. It's, it's pure chance. As far as I know, I've never actually played a slot machine. I've been to Las Vegas many times. Um, because I like watching other people gamble. It's, it's fun to watch other people lose their money, but I've never gambled myself because I don't feel like losing my own money. So I don't, I don't actually don't even know how you really operate a slot machine. I mean, I know, of course you pull the handle, but is there any difference on how far or how long you pull it? I don't know. At least here, it doesn't seem to make much difference. I mean, this is a, a pretty nice little game. I like the graphics. Again, it's running in high-resolution EGA, which makes it look very nice. Um, I think this is only 16 colors, so they've, they've made it look... Uh, like, look at the, the color gradient at the bottom there with that TGS logo. They've made it look really nice with 16 colors. I have to say, I like what they've done with the, the very limited color palette that they had. Um, you know, I mean, they did some dithering down there to make it look like they, they have several more colors than they really have, so I... I like the looks of this. It, it's a nice looking little game. And I mean, the sound effects are again, you know, perfect DOS sound effects, great DOS sound effects. I mean, just, just listen to that. That's what a game should sound like. That's, that's a, a great sound, but I don't know. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just a slot machine. Anyway, it's a, it's a nice game. Oh, the author actually lives in Las Vegas. Um, I mean, okay, it's a, uh, it's a nice game, but is it something that I would play for very long? Probably not. Anyway, moving along, let's go back to our copycat program, and let's see. So, darn it. Very entertaining solitaire card game. Different from most solitaire games. Fast-paced. How do you have a fast-paced solitaire game? I'm curious now. Usually they don't have any kind of time limit involved. Do we want to... Let's go ahead and just take a quick look. Let's just... Again, I, I probably am not going to... I'm probably not going to show all games on the disc, but I don't want to miss something. I'm, I'm always worried that I might pass up something really good. I'm one of those people who's always afraid of missing out on something. So I always try to... I like that parrot picture. I don't know what it has to do with the game, but the parrot's pretty cool. Important. You must make checks payable to Rob... To Robert Roberts. Is that actually his... Oh, okay, it's it's not nice to make fun of people's names, so let's just... Anyway, um... Um... So this is Darn It, and I, I really don't know how you play this game. I really have no idea how to play this game at all. Um... If I click here, nothing happens. Do I need to... Okay. I click there, I guess, to draw a card and then put it somewhere. Okay, fine. Uh, is there... Uh, okay... And why would I, 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 where should I put the cards? I really don't know. Do I just, I, I, I'm going to assume there's some kind of strategy indicating why you would want to put certain cards where, but I, I really have no idea what or where or why. So I'm just going to 
discard cards from grid. Uh, I don't know what I want to discard. Uh, 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 what? How does this work? Huh? Uh, uh, I, I don't get it. I guess the idea is you're supposed to match up. Wait, what? Huh? What? Uh, I really have no idea. Hold on, if I click on help. Um. Okay, so the goal is to get the face cards into that pattern. Okay. Was that O Canada that just played? Um What does Boss do? Okay. Oh, that's nice. Type exit to get back to your game of darn it or abort to quit to DOS. That's cool. So if the boss keeps sticking around, you can type abort to just quit back to real DOS. Alright, so we type exit here. Alright. Uh, I'm going to assume that you can only match certain cards with certain other types of cards, but I don't really know. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, I see. The cards have to add up to 10. So 7 plus 3 is 10. And this... Okay, I can't. Okay, I guess... Okay. Okay. So, it's so like five and five. Oh, I have to put, put all the cards down. I kind of got an inkling of that when I noticed that the tens just disappeared. As what? I lose? Why do I lose? I have no idea. No, thanks. I don't know what, uh, what was up with that. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. Anyway, I thought this might be a Canadian game because I thought that music sounded a bit like O Canada, but apparently the um, company that made the game is uh, in Durham, North Carolina, so I guess not. Anyway, all right. So going back to go.bat, let's see what else awaits us here. Um, so that was darn it. Klondike Solitaire. I mean, do we really... Eh. Eh. All right, let's go ahead and play Klondike Solitaire just for a moment. I mean, I'm curious at least as to how these look. I mean, it, Klondike Solitaire, it's it's solitaire. I mean, come on, it's, it's the same solitaire that comes with every version of Windows since forever, pretty much. But I'm, I'm always just curious what they did with these. Uh, oh, this is the share where... Oh, this is uh, oh, this is a self-extracting archive, I think. Okay. Free CompuServe membership kit. Too bad CompuServe doesn't exist anymore. Man, remember CompuServe? That was all right. Uh, press Y to extract files. Yeah, it's a self-extracting exe uh, archive. So, all right, let's go ahead and run Klondike. Whoa. Why is this song so popular? This is, of course. Um, uh, Scott Joplin's The Entertainer. Why is this used in so many games and, and works of media like this? I don't know. Anyway, do you want to use the mouse? I like how I can use the mouse, and then it asks me, do you want to use the mouse? You have to use the mouse to choose whether you want to use the mouse. Can I use the keyboard as well? I don't think so. Can I press? No, you, you have to use the mouse to choose if you want to use the mouse. It's pretty awesome. Anyway, please, please enter your name now. All right. Yeah, so here we go. It's 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 Klondike Solitaire. I mean, it's and you can't even drag the cards. <laughs> at least it at least it tells you what to do in case you're not sure. In case you've never played Solitaire and don't know how to work how it works. But I mean, it's it's just you, you can't drag the cards. You just click on them and then yeah. How do I draw a card? Wait, how do I... 
peek? Can I? Oh, you can peek. Okay, it's kind of a cheat, I guess, but... All right. Oh, you can, you can peek at the cards there, and you can peek at what's in the pack. That's nice. Okay. Well, that's a little bit of a cheat, but I guess it's... I mean, if you want to do it, you can, and if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. What's in configure? Sound, full part off, error messages, yes, mouse, ask. Okay. It did indeed ask if I want to use the mouse. Uh, okay, that's fine, but how do I draw a card? Because if, if I click here, nothing happens, and... Oh. I clicked with the right mouse button. Wait, no, clicking with the right mouse button put it into the waste pot. Oh, can I Can I still draw it? Oh, okay. I see. Okay, so you click with the right mouse button, and then that causes it to draw a card. Oh, you don't, you don't have to move the mouse up here. Clicking anywhere with the right mouse button makes it draw a card. Okay, okay. That's, that's kind of nice, actually. So when you want to draw, you don't have to move all the way up here and click. You just can click any time with the right mouse button, and that makes it draw a card right away. All right. Can I put that up here? Yes, I can. And then that goes there. Now I can take the king and put the king there. And then that opens up there. And that, no, it's, the, it's clubs and these are spades. Um, that can go down there. And that can go down there. And that can go, I mean, come on. It's, again, it's, it's solitaire. I mean, what am I doing with my life? Oh, I missed that. It's 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 an okay solitaire game, but it doesn't really seem very particularly remarkable. I mean, two things I like about it. One, I like that you can peek. I mean, some people might think that's cheating, and well, maybe it is, but that's okay. Um, oh, I didn't mean to. Can I undo? Okay. An undo is nice. I mean, an undo option is, is always nice in games like this. So it's nice that it has an undo option. It's nice that you can peek, and I like that you can click the right mouse button at any at any time to draw a card. But otherwise, I mean, yeah, it's it's. Are you sure? Yes, no, or ignore? Is that ignore? Okay, I clicked on ignore, but it didn't seem to ignore it. The the maybe it means something else. Maybe it means maybe it stands for I go now. When you click on IGN, that stands for I go now because you want to leave the game. That must be what happened. All right, let's let's go ahead and quickly do one more because um, I think the next game is another one of these casino games. So, uh, yeah, Las Vegas EGA Casino. So I'll play that, and the next time we can do Star Defense or Star Star Defense, actually, because there's a star after the word star. So Las Vegas EGA Casino. Three. Oh, I accidentally pressed Enter twice. So yeah, if, you, if you do that, it, it shows you the files here in the in the uh, in the directory. So I'll copy to disk. Uh, yeah, sure. LV Casino for Las Vegas Casino. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really much of a casino person. I mean, there, like I said, there are all these gambling games. All these. Uh, it's a very small exe file. Okay, so what do we have here? We have slots, poker, and blackjack. I don't know why I read that in reverse order. Um, I don't know. Let's just play video poker. Why not? I used to be pretty good at video poker when I was a kid, like when I was seven years old or something. I actually played a lot of video poker on my... We had a video poker game on our Apple II GS, and I actually got good enough at it to... Well, I mean, I, I wasn't great at it, but I, I don't know. Anyway, insert coin. Wait, really? <laughs> Use the insert key to insert coins. That's clever. Uh, okay, where is insert? Yeah, and it really does. You press insert and it inserts coins. All right. Um, 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 um. Do I want to... We've got five, six, and seven, so... If I hold the jack and the two, I, I might get a straight, but what are the chances of... Yeah. Not very good chances of getting a straight, actually. Um, should I just hold the jack and... I don't know. I'm not good at video poker anymore. Uh, oh, that makes it hold. Okay, let's just do this. Let's just hold the jack and hope I get another jack at least. Nope, I did not. That was a, that was a total loss. And actually, I got, a, I got an 8 and a 9. So if I had actually held those cards, would I have gotten a straight? Maybe. I don't know. Let's try again. Um, I guess I should hold the two fives, because that's a pair, but it's not going to be worth much if I don't get 
uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. It seems like I stopped being good at video poker. Well, I was never great at video poker. I mean, I guess when I was a kid, I, I was good for a kid. Uh, I guess I guess that's fair to say, but I wasn't great at, at this game. And I mean, you know, it's it's video poker. How good can you be at video poker? I mean, there's no there's no um, interaction with other players. It's basically just it's really just based on what cards you get. So I don't know. Uh, oops, I did that backwards. I meant to hold. I meant to hold the three cards in the center, but I accidentally held the two cards at the edge instead and, and lost again. Well, this is not going well. Okay, let's hold the king and the queen. I got, okay, I got two sevens, but it doesn't count for anything. Um, hmm. Okay, hold the pair that I have and hope I get another one. I don't know, I mean, this is not really... Yeah, it's not really, not a very good strategy. I mean, this is the strategy that I had when I was a kid, but it's clearly not not serving me well. Wow, I'm, I'm really, I, I haven't won a single time. Wow, this is really bad. Wow, just pure garbage. Okay, I'll just hold nothing and just hope I get, just completely randomly get better cards. No, I did not, all right. I better win this time because I'm out of money now, so, gosh, um, I'll just hold those two and it's kind of stupid because it means I'm throwing away that pair, but, wow, insert coin, I have no coins left, oh, oh, let's go negative, that's nice, okay, wow, that's an interesting feature, um, again, I mean, do I want to throw away, I mean, I could throw away the, the, the king and the queen and then hope I get a four and a five for a straight, but that the, the chance... Actually, that would be a straight flush, because those are all clubs. Well, it would it would be a straight flush if the four and five were clubs, but I mean, again, what are the chances of that happening? Yeah, I mean, if that happens, it would be great. That would be a huge win. A straight flush would be... Uh, that's You can see it's the, it's the second highest type of hand. Only a royal flush is, is, is higher than that. But uh, I, the chances of that happening are so low that I don't think I should bank on it. So I'll just hold the face cards and hope I get... Yeah, I got nothing. Well, I wouldn't have gotten that straight anyway, so good thing I didn't hold up for it. But... Um, okay, well, okay, finally at least I get to break even. At least I get jacks, so let's maybe hope I get another king. Okay, jacks are better, so I got my money back. I mean, yeah, it's it's video poker, so, all right. Oh, king and two aces. Ooh, three of a kind. I'm, I'm back in the positive, at least I don't, I'm not bankrupt now. Let's, let's, okay, it's back up, I still can. And how good is the blackjack here? I mean, Las Vegas is gonna blackjack. Press F1 for help. Can I press something else? Can I maybe? Can I? I guess I have to. I guess I have to press F1 for help to find out what else I can press. Uh, F2 is change the size of bankroll. Change the bet. Change number of decks. Status of the deck. How to play? Use open numbers of bet. Return to Return. Okay, spacebar is hit. Return is stay. I guess that's kind of important. Um. So minimum bet is okay. So I can. Oh, I see bankrolls, how much money I have. And then, all right. Um, sure, let's bet. I don't know, let's bet four. Okay, what do I have? It doesn't even tell me what I have. I mean, I can see I have seven, but it would be... I don't know, maybe it's lazy of me, but I feel like I would I, I could benefit from just having a little indicator to show how much I have rather than have me having to actually count and say I have seven. Because if I go... Okay, so that's 17 now, right? I should probably, uh, I should probably stand here. Okay, I won because he busted. All right, um, so yeah, it's it's blackjack. I mean, it's it's a, it's, you know, again, it's it's a card game. I mean, what's what is there to say? Let's look at what their slot machine looks like real quick. Dollar slots, micro bucks. I mean, all these these gambling and yeah. I mean, it's it's really not much different from the. The sound effects are almost the same. It has almost the same sounds as as in the other one. Or it seems to me, it seems like they're almost the same sound effects. So again, I I keep getting my money back. Well, not that time. 
Oh, these are dollar slots. So I, I put in one dollar, and then that time I got two dollars. But oh, I see. Cherries are two bucks. So if you, you you put in a buck, and then if you get a cherries, if you if you get cherries, you get two dollars back. If the cherries are on the left side, here the cherries are in the middle, so I didn't get my money back. Oh, hey, that's not bad. Got ten back. I'm almost back to where I started. Well, I can see why people play this kind of thing because, you know, when you when you look at it, it it's so stupid. Like you, you look at people gambling. Well, I I look at people gambling, and I always just think, well, why are they doing that? Like, why are they? doing something that they know perfectly well is is rigged to take their money and that they're going to lose that but when you start doing it it just becomes so entrancing that you just you just keep thinking oh i just want to push it just a little farther just one more it really does does prey on people's um people's impulses and th this sort of addictive instinct that people have it, it really is kind of insidious it's one reason why i don't gamble i mean it might be fun, but like I said, I don't, I don't like losing money. I'm not into one in the hole. Yeah, this also lets you go negative. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's a, a slot machine. So yeah, that was that exit to DOS. So there we go. All right, like I said, yeah, there are so many of these these casino games and board and card games. I'll probably skip over some of them because, you know, I mean, how much fun is that really just to watch somebody playing a, a card game? I mean, I have nothing against card games. I like card games, but I don't think they're really what, you know, they're not really much much fun. When, you, when you're watching, like, a YouTube video of somebody playing computer games, you're not really just there to watch them play card games. I mean, come on, that's not, that's not what people come for. Well, people didn't really come for this in the first place, probably. People probably want me to play some other Sierra Adventures or something like that. I mean, I will do that eventually, but uh, but I wanted to highlight some of the games on this CD because some of them are really good, like like Bass Tour. Wow, what a great game Bass Tour was. That was so much fun. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna play some more of that after I finish uploading this video. I'm gonna play more Bass Tour because that's such a, such a good game. Um, but yeah, the rest of the games on this CD. I mean, there there are other good games, but a lot of them just are not very good. So, anyway, boy, that took an hour. If I know I'm going, I, I really, you know, you really just get caught up in the moment. I mean, I feel like I I barely did anything, but I've been talking for an hour, and it's it's probably uh, kind of kind of gratuitous at this point. But anyway, um, all right. This has been uh, some stuff from the Game Fest 2 CD. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, I hope it wasn't too boring. Let me know what you thought. Was it uh, was this boring? Was it kind of interesting? Was it at least at least watchable, or was it just completely a total waste of time? Let me know what you think. I'd be curious to see your thoughts. So, uh, yeah, post uh, post a comment and let me know how you folks feel about this. I would I would like to know. Anyway, again, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you're all doing well, and I will talk to you folks later. Ta ta.